Hey guys, how are you? This is Nikhil. So in this video, from this video onwards, I should say, I would like to start the subject of power systems. So, and the first topic that I will be taking in power systems is the generation as you can see on the board. So before getting into the generation topic, I would like to just give a brief structure of a power system basically. What is a power system? What are the components of power systems and where generation comes and why we should study the generation. So that are the aspects of this particular video. The board, you are seeing a single line diagram. This is basically a structure of a power system. So before getting into the structure of power system, a brief definition of power system I would like to give. Power system is nothing but it is a system or I can say it is a sequential arrangements of components okay to generate power and transmit the power distribute the power and utilize the power and protect it at every point of time so that is what the basic uh, definition of power system means power system is nothing but just arrangement of some equipments such equipment what they will do they will generate the electricity and uh, they will transmit the electricity to longer distances and after that it will uh, distribute okay the electricity to different different houses and uh, that electricity will be processed or I can say it will be utilized and protection of this system at every point of time is basically combination of power systems. So when you talk about power system study, we study uh, as you know basically four main aspects. One is generation and the next one is transmission and distribution. The next one is switch gear and protection and then we also study utilization of electrical engineering. So these four are the aspects that should be covered basically in the topic of power systems okay so generation is that aspect of power system that deals how to cr create or produce electrical energy transmission and distribution is that part of power systems which basically studies of that system of conductors or a network which is used to transmit power through conductors so that is transmission and distribution and next comes the switch gear and protection so switch gear and protection is basically studying of protective devices how to protect the power system from getting into faults or uh, basically what I mean to say is this such a big power system is there. So what is basically the idea behind the power systems? So I should say one of the core idea behind maintaining a power system and doing this entire thing is business, energy business. Why? Because see, today you are consuming electricity and you are having meters. Meters are running while you are connecting, uh, you are you're consuming the electricity. You are generating some bills that means you are generating some revenue to the power utilities. Basically electricity is one of the biggest business okay one of the largest business and it is a source of revenue. So even if the power line is shut down for one second one minute it will lead to crores of rupees of uh, loss to the power utilities. So therefore it is very much required that this power system does not shut down or does not uh, you know go off at least for a minute of time. So not only on revenue or economical point of view but also on social and economical growth point of view. Of course it is a business but without this electricity business happening can you run your business? Let us say you are having some shop or something else. Without electricity can you maintain your shop? No you cannot shop. So it is a business that has to be run to make sure that everybody can run their businesses properly. So that is the importance of the electrical engineering or the power sector basically I mean to say and that subject which basically studies the power sector is the power systems. So it is very much essential that you have to have a reliable or a continuous power supply. Therefore it is very much necessary that you must uh, okay, study about switch gear and protection. Okay and next is utilization of electrical engineering. This is also very very important topic basically for many state level PSUs, SSC, JE examinations this part will be included in the syllabus and also in semester exams also you will have you will basically study about uh, electric traction, heating, welding, illumination such topics will be primarily studied in utilization of electrical engineering. So what is the importance of generation I should say? What is the importance why do we need generation? See in the universe or in the nature can you find electrical energy in raw form or directly? No I cannot find whereas you take other forms of energy let us say I want light energy is it directly available of course it is directly available from the sun next heat energy is it directly available yes directly from the heat. sun you are also having heat also otherwise if you are having some fuel coal or something like that burn that you will get light as well as heat next let us see mechanical energy 
डू यू हैव मैकेनिकल एनर्जी यस वी हैव वी हैव कैनेटिक एनर्जी इन द विंड यू हैव वेव्स वाटर वेव्स अदरवाइज यू आर हैविंग पोटेंशियल एनर्जी इन द फॉलोइंग वाटर व्हिच इज फॉलोइंग फ्रॉम अ माउंटेन इजंट इट दैट मींस एक्सेप्ट इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी ऑलमोस्ट ऑल फॉर्म्स ऑफ एनर्जी आर डायरेक्टली अवेलेबल इन द यूनिवर्स फॉर आवर यूज एंड बेसिकली व्हाट प्राइमरीली अ ह्यूमन नीड्स इज दीज बेसिक फॉर्म्स ऑफ एनर्जी ओनली what are those basic forms of energy just like i was telling light heat and mechanical energy these three are the primary components of energy or primary types of energy that a human basically requires for leading a better day to day life isn't it okay so what is the problem sir now the problem is that everybody requires this energy and the sources or the resources of this energy are not available to everybody why because they are asymmetrically distributed across the globe or on the earth due to asymmetrical and uh, uneven distribution of energy resources on the earth it is very much essential that you have a common source of energy or a commonality between uh, a common link uh, connecting all these energy sources and uh, providing that energy to everybody so such an advanced link of energy and uh, that link also must be a form of energy okay it should be a form of energy that can give rise to any kind of energy that we require so such an advanced energy is electrical energy why because let us say you are having a hydroelectric power station what does a hydroelectric power station do falling water has got a potential energy it will convert into electrical energy and you will get electrical energy output that is a hydroelectric power station next you are having thermal power station let us say you are having some coal you are burning that coal and you are producing the electrical energy let us say you are having some solar power plant in the solar power plant you are utilizing the sunlight and producing the electrical energy now you see there are different types of uh, power stations the input energies are different but the output is the same so don't you think you can interconnect all these power stations yes i can interconnect all the power stations see at some 10000 uh, kilometers away you are having hydroelectric power station after some 500 km you are having some other coal power station and after some 3000 km you are having a solar power station but by the use of electrical energy by because the output is electrical energy electrical energy means some current voltage this thing only so just by laying some conducting wires you can interconnect all the energy resources and commonly you can transmit it to wherever you want isn't it so if you are an electrical engineer you are not just an electrical engineer you are a mechanical engineer you are also an illumination engineer you are also a thermal engineer and the list is just goes on why because electrical energy is such a unique energy because it has got no one fixed energy form it can be converted into any energy form isn't it for example i am producing electricity from hydroelectric power station that means input is a mechanical energy it doesn't mean that if you are getting the electrical energy from hydroelectric power station it must be converted into mechanical energy only it's not like that you may also convert it into light energy by placing a lamp you may also convert this into a heat energy by placing a heater or you could convert into mechanical energy by connecting a motor so that is the uniqueness of electrical energy it can take any other energy forms into itself and it can give rise to any other energy forms if you see here light heat and here heat and all these forms of energy are taken by the electrical and they are converted into electrical simply i can say electrical energy is like a bus of all forms of energy so that is the important of energy importance of energy and in generation topic we will study the system of how to convert other forms of energy into the electrical energy and once you have created the electrical energy you have to transmit and distribute isn't it why because energy resources are scattered you have to link them together at one point and you have to distribute it to the people so that is what the transmission and distribution deals with and basically what are transmission and distribution they are a system of conductors they are a network of conductors why because conductors are only traveling uh, uh, over the towers long distances connecting this tower, this station to that station like that and i have told about switch gear and protection and then we have discussed also about utilization of electrical engineering so that is in brief about power systems and again when you talk about electrical engineering one of the primary component of electrical engineering is voltages so what are the voltage levels that we generally employ for generating electrical energy so this is a very very important aspect so that voltage levels are 3.3 kv 11 kv 13.2 kv 22 kv 33 kv and also 1.1 kv so these are basically 
the voltage levels where you can generate electrical energy okay so why sir why you are going in such a high voltage levels that i will discuss when we will actually start studying about power plants okay but for now you have to remember these set of voltages which are called as generation voltages so for some je level examinations there are some important questions there are two types of questions that may be asked here so what are the two important type of questions is what is the voltage level that is adopted in the india for generation of electrical energy so 11 kv is the voltage level that is adopted in india for all generating stations so this is one question the other question is what is the highest possible generation voltage what is the highest possible generation voltage 33 kv is the highest generation voltage sir is it is 11 kv is used all over the india it was like that but majority of the plants are around 11 kv only but practically when you speak practically now in india we are having voltage ranges up to 15 kv to 27 kv so these are the voltage levels that we are actually employing as of now practically but according to the bookish terminology these are the generation voltages and these two, these two are the two important points to be noted but when you see practically we are having around 15 kv to 27 kv generating generators are been manufactured in india and they are utilized in power stations so that is about uh, generation voltages now once if you look at this particular single line diagram here you are having an ac generator okay because this is where you are generating the electrical energy and uh, it is an ac power system universally and ac three phase means you are having two connections star and delta so we will generate electrical power in star connection star connection means what it is three phase four wire system isn't it three phase four wire system so in three phase four wire system you are going to generate electrical energy at how much voltage for example let us say 11 kv now this 11 kv will be stepped up to 400 kv by using a step up transformer what is that step up transformer now if you look at the generator side how many wires are there four wires that means star connection so the primary winding of this transformer is star connected but the secondary side will be delta connected why because you are transmitting electrical energy on the conductors or the transmission line over the towers which is also a cost factor suppose you are having a delta connection how many wire system it is it is a three wire system otherwise if it was a star connection how many wires four wires that means for carrying an extra conductor you have to invest more on the tower or on the equipment isn't it so to reduce that cost of transmission why because the transmission lines are very lengthy why the transmission lines are very lengthy as i was telling you these energy resources are scattered and they are very far away and the place where actually energy consumption is taking place is the load center which is very far away from the generating station so you need a link between generating station to that load center that link itself is a transmission line so transmission lines are very lengthy and very costly apparatus so you require a three phase three wire system to carry on the transmission so from this what we can conclude we can conclude that generation is basically carried out in delta system and transmission is carried out in generation is carried out in star system and transmission is carried out in delta system that is about transmission and again distribution is carried out in star system okay transmission is in delta distribution is in star system okay after generating at 11 kv you are having a step up transformer which is tra which is stepping up to 400 kv sir why we have to use a step up transformer the reason is now if you are taking a generating station how much power does a generating station generate around 100 megawatts more than greater than 100 megawatts and 100 megawatts of power can uh, supply electrical energy for a city that means you are generating such a huge power and you are supposed to transmit this power over a very long distance that means what should be the pressure of electrical energy electrical pressure should be high that is nothing but the voltage for example i am taking an example i am having a tap here on my board and let us say up to some distance let us say at this end of the board i am having a tap and i am having a pipe and the pipe length is up to this point now i have opened the tap with certain pressure and i am getting some quantity of water okay at some good quantity of water and good pressure I'm getting. Now what I'm doing is I'm increasing the length of the pipe and I'm taking it to your house, let us say. The distance will be very, very high. I'm keeping the same pressure. Will I will get the same amount of water there? No. The reason is the length of the line has been increased. Therefore, you require more pressure to transmit the same amount of power or with the same uh, consistency without minimum, without losses. 
that is the reason why we have to step up the voltages so we will step up the voltage and by the time you reach the load center you will be sequentially you will be stepping down the voltages so you will step up at 400 kV and again there will be some station substation 400 to 220 kV 220 to 132 kV so all are delta delta connected transformers only delta delta only 132 by 33 kV and 33 by 11 kV so this substation is called as a local substation from here onwards the distribution will start okay distribution will start and uh, up to this step up transformer it is the generation in between this entire line is a transmission system only and this is the distribution system in the distribution system you are having this local substation from this local substation you will be getting different feeders these are nothing but the distribution transformer which will be placed in your colonies and distribution transformers windings are primary side delta and the secondary side is star connected and uh, why is it star connected means you have to supply the in individual consumers not every consumer requires three phase supply some of them require single phase so to provide single phase means what you require you require a phase and you require a neutral so that is possible only in star connection dtr secondary is a star connection that means the actual distribution happens in star connection only and this is a distribution transformer it steps down 11 kv voltages to 440 volts if it is a three phase and in a two in, if it is a single phase system it will approximately equal to 230 volts so that is about the distribution and this is a brief idea or brief uh, you know structure of power systems and uh, we have to carry on our discussion about generation the next thing is what are the topics that we will have to study in generation so the topics that we will generally study in generation is basically i have divided generation into some parts so before actually getting into the power stations First, we will study something called as generation economics and then we will study about power plant engineering. So in generation economics, as you know, basically we will study about different factors like demand factor, load factor, this factor, that factor. There are many factors and there are problems associated with it. So we will deal about such factors and we will study the problems about that factors in generation economics. So that is one aspect. One is the factors one, factors and its problems. And next one we will study in generation economics is we will study about the cost of electrical energy. Basically, I will study about tariff. And then there is another important aspect that generally many students will neglect that is economics of power factor improvement. So we will actually study what is a power factor that we already know how to improve a power factor and what are the costs that govern the improvement or the power factor improvement. So we will study such economical aspects in this first topic and each of them is very very important topic and next in power plant engineering we will now we will actually study the construction and operation and working principles behind different types of power stations so we will be studying only three basic uh, power uh, important power stations in our course that is we will study about hydro power stations and then we will study about thermal and finally we will study about nuclear power stations so this is about power plant engineering in general you might be having an experience of studying power plant engineering first and then economics but my way of teaching is different i will teach economics first and power plant engineering why because the reason is simple we are preparing for competitive exams and we have to move our preparation plan in such a way that we will get maximum benefit in short span of time and you will have that what i was already telling time to benefit ratio must be maximum that will happen only when you study the generation economics first why because when you compare power plant engineering and generation economics many students tends to go mar lose marks in economic aspects and you will be getting many problems here and this is also one of the most important aspect as compared to power plant engineering why because these factors are the factors where students get most confused so to remove that confusion and become uh, very strong in the subject i will first deal about generation economics and another aspect regarding the understanding of subject is once you are very good with these aspects then it becomes very much understanding or it it becomes very much meaningful when we will be studying actually about this term this power stations in fact so you will you can find some meaning rather than reading some uh, uh, textbook or some story you will find some idea or you will find some meaning when you are first perfect with this economic aspects then you will understand how we are generating and what is the reason of generating in such a way understood so like this we will be proceeding forward so this is about the introduction video regarding generation power system gen power generation thank you for watching in the next video we will immediately straight away start with generation economics okay thank you for watching